Hi everybody, it's Julie and welcome to Hello Monday. This is our weekly creative video series and I had a lot of fun making this very bright and cheerful nautical themed card. And the trick with this one was creating an offset chevron effect. And I've never done it before so it was kind of tricky and I had to really pre-plan how I was going to do it. So to get started, I took a quarter sheet of cardstock. You could do this on a card front, but since this was the first time I was I had ever done it, I just decided to go with a quarter sheet. And I needed to mark with a pencil where the tip of my chevron was going to come. And it's going to be offset, so it's not going to be in the center of the card. And then I'm going to use some washi tape to create my chevron pattern. And I love these collections by my mind's eye. And I'm using the stripes in the yellow because I thought it would be great for the nautical theme. And I'm using the diagonal line on my cutting mat to help guide me in making you know that angle. And I need to make sure the end of the washi tape goes past where that pencil mark is because that's where the very tip or the point of the chevron is going to be. So now I can trim off this excess and then I will rotate the paper and do the other side of the chevron. Now again, I am using the yellow tape and I want to make sure the end of the tape goes um, just up to or past that pencil mark because that's where, where the two intersect, where that lowermost intersection point is, that's where the tip of my chevron is going to be. So I'm just going to line that up again using the diagonal on my cutting mat. And it looks like I was just a little bit off right there, so I'm just going to lift it up. That's the great thing about washi tape is that it's repositionable, so I could lift it up and make sure that I had it all nice and straight and positioned where I needed it. And then again, I'm going to trim off the end there. Now you could stop with that, but I wanted to have a double um, layer of the tape. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process. And again, I'm using that uh, pencil mark that I made originally as my guide. And here I'm using the ruler here to just kind of show you there's where the center point of my chevron is going to be. And you can see that's where that um, visual line is helping me make sure I'm centered with the points of my chevron. So now I'm going to take the other side, add an one more strip, and again, making sure that I'm intersecting in just the right spot to keep that center point going. And then we'll go ahead and trim off the excess. And once we have it uh, perfectly positioned, then I can go ahead and trim it off. But it looks like I was a little bit off there and I needed to straighten it out. So we'll just get that taken care of and then we can trim it off. And now I'm going to take my metal edge ruler because I'm going to cut right down the middle of these. And I'm going to cut making some soft, gentle marks almost like scoring instead of cutting all the way through. I don't want to cut right through the paper. I just want to cut through the two layers of washi tape. So the easiest way to do this is to use a craft knife and then my metal edge ruler is going to give me that straight edge I need. And I can cut, make several cuts. So I'm just going to cut um, one on top of the other until I, it feels like I've probably cleared the two pieces of washi tape or the two thicknesses, but I haven't cut through the card front. Now what I can do is take my craft knife and just get under the ends of that tape and lift it up. And this is an excess piece that I don't really need because I'm trying to create mitered corners. So I'm just going to lift that up and separate it. And what you can't see on camera is that I also have a piece of acetate over on the right hand side. And I'm just taking all these excess pieces and putting them onto that acetate sheet and I can use them later on. Now I'm sure your mind is starting to spin because you can see lots of other possibilities here with the washi tape and this technique, but for now, at least I had to tell myself to stay focused. <laughs> that this is what I was trying to do, so I had to finish this before I could go on with the other ideas that started popping into my head. So I lifted up the other side of the washi tape so I could get under there and get that remnant piece out from underneath it. And then I can go ahead and smooth that right back down. And there you can see I've got perfectly mitered corners. Isn't that awesome? So it's coming along really nicely. And all I have to do is repeat that process on the other um, chevron to get that um, extra piece off. Just carefully peel it away. And you do want to be gentle and careful as you're doing it because washi tape can tear. So you don't want to be overly aggressive. So I'm going to lift up that other side and then I can get down underneath there and pull away that remnant piece very carefully. So you can see I'm kind of going a little bit slow there because I don't want to rip anything. I just want to make sure it all turns out um, perfectly mitered. And you could do this with actual paper too if you want, but it's not quite as fast and easy because 
Um, the cardstock isn't going to be repositionable like the washi tape is. And then I'm going to die cut an anchor from some uh, crafter board. And I love this because it creates kind of a chipboard thickness. I love how thick it is. And I'm going to mount it temporarily to a scrap piece of cardstock because I want to color it and I don't want it sliding around. <laughs> I don't want to get Copic marker all over my fingers. So I'm just going to mount it temporarily. And once I have that in place, I can go ahead and take my markers and just start coloring. And that will help me um, keep that in place without it slipping and sliding and going all over the place. I probably should have put a little bit more tape. I was kind of chintzy on the tape there. So um, it, it slipped a little bit on me. But for the most part, that's how I like to um, color those things so I don't get Copic all over my fingers. So once that is all nicely tinted and it's fully dry, you can come back in and I wanted to have a really high gloss effect on it. So I'm using Ranger Glossy Accents to put a coating over the top of it. And you do kind of want to make sure that your alcohol ink is dry first before you go on to this step. And I'm going to put the glossy accents on kind of thickly. It goes on kind of cloudy, but it will dry completely clear and have a nice high gloss finish. And then I'm going to take some more of this My Mind's Eye washi tape. I had to use these blue and white polka dots. They're just too fun. So I just took a strip. I'd already cut it on the diagonal, and I just took that piece and just left it as it was and went ahead and ran a horizontal, horizontal strip of it there just to kind of serve as an accent. Um, a visual accent down there on that side of the card. And then to say what I wanted, I didn't have a stamp that said what I wanted. So I'm using these really fun ABC stickers by Lily B. And they're perfect because they're tall and they're skinny and I could spell out exactly what I wanted to say right there on my card. And I thought it was fun to have it go along my chevron there. And now my um, little anchor is all completely dry. And yes, through the magic of TV, I had one already done so I could keep going with the card. So. I did one the night before because I knew I wanted to have one for this card. And then I'm just going to start adding some of this um, cobalt blue or navy blue and white um, baker's twine to kind of keep tying in those nautical colors. And I'm just going to take a little mini glue dot and put that on the back side of my anchor so that I can kind of tack down that twine so it won't come up on me. I decided it would be fun to kind of wrap it around the anchor, just kind of have it wrapping around in some kind of interesting, <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know, I was just feeling artsy, I guess. So that's what I decided to do. So we're just gonna tack that down right there. And then we can kind of fuss around with how we wanna wrap it around and how tight we want it or loose we want it and have it going up the card there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off after I've uh, fussed around with it there. And then I'll just kind of mess around with how I want it to kind of twirl around or curl around. And then we'll go ahead and glue it to the back there. So I just had to be, you know, play around with it a little bit. And then we'll take some more glue dots. And I'm just going to fold these in half and mount them to the back. And I just needed smaller, skinnier glue dots. And I didn't want to bother with cutting them in half. So I'm just going to fold them in half and then transfer them from the liner paper onto the back of the anchor. And there I'll just get them all in different positions, you know, the ends and the back side of the anchor, and then I can go ahead and glue it down. So, of course, I have to use my tweezers so that I don't get my big fingers in the way. And we'll go ahead and position that. And I wanted it kind of at an angle. I guess I could have had it straight up and down, but sometimes putting things down at an angle, it's like, that was very deliberate and wonky. I don't have to worry about it being perfectly straight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive on the back. And this is going to let me anchor the remainder um, in place. So I'll go ahead and determine how much slack I need to kind of create the effect I was going for. So it's twirling around a little bit on its own. And I'm just going to kind of go with it and not fight it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and secure that on the back side. And then add the, where it's curling and twirling there, I'm going to take more glossy accents and I apologize. I'm not sure what happened to the exposure on the video here, but for some reason, maybe the sun came out because <laughs> I have these really tall windows I'm way up in a vaulted ceiling above me. And I think the sun came out and just kind of blasted through that window there <laughs> temporarily. So now I've got my twine all glued down with some glossy accents to keep those curls in place where I have them, you know, kind of curling around there. And then I'll go ahead and add some embellishments. And I love, of course, my blue sequins. These sequins are so fun because they have an iridescent effect or quality to them. So I had to include a little blue one and then I brought in some of these really fun enamel dots in the bright yellow colors 
to um, complement the twine and the washi tape and that brought in all my red white blue and yellow colors and then I can go ahead and mount the whole panel to the card front so I could have done all of this on the card base itself but sometimes you know when you're experimenting it helps to just do it on a quarter sheet and then mount it to a card base and you're good to go so just kind of one of those things that I like to do sometimes if I'm trying something I've never done before and then to finish off the card I decided it would be fun to round the corner on the left hand side which helps visually you know run the eye around the edges and there you can see those different elements and how cute they look together I just thought this card turned out so fun and thanks for watching